Computers keep changing the world, but their power and safety is limited by their rigid design. The T2 Tile project works for bigger and safer computing using Living Systems principles. Follow our progress here on T Tuesday Updates. This is the 42nd T Tuesday update. Let's get into it. I want to start today with some hardware stuff. I've been looking at trying to understand how glue works for PLA and to put them on acrylic sheets. It took me forever to figure this out, so I wanted to share it with you all. We'll take a look at this and then we'll come back. So it begins with like a Jeopardy question. This glue that works for PLA and acrylic is strong, cheap, and easy to find. What do you think it is? Let's take a look. So I've done a test run to attach the female feet of the uh, tiles to an acrylic sheet using two-part epoxy resin, and, and that worked pretty well, and that's the sheet that I've been working with. But it was really kind of a pain in the butt because the you know you have to stir the stuff, and it, it kicks really quick. So uh, even just getting the feet for nine tiles down so I could lay the whole thing down before the stuff uh, started to harden up was, was stress-inducing, to say the least, and I really didn't think I could get 16 of them all done in any reliable way and so I started looking for other glue solutions to connect PLA to acrylic and googling around it seemed like it wasn't all that clear it wasn't like there was a single solution people were saying do this and referring to other people's discussion of how to do it and so forth uh, I found one page on Hackaday it was very helpful a uh, guy uh, Tom Nardi saying that he was uh, figuring out what if you were trying to bond acrylic to, to PLA using just locally available stuff and he had a picture of all the glue section in Home Depot and and he did a comparison. He said his go-to stuff, if he wasn't getting locally sourced, if he was buying it on the net, he would get this Weld On 16 stuff that he liked. And uh, um, but he, and then he tried a bunch of other stuff. And I said, well, okay, but if I'm going to if I'm going to go to Amazon, go to the internet anyway, let's get this Weld On 16 stuff. So I looked for that. Um, I found what the you know it's Amazon's choice. So he said side grip 16, but Amazon's choice for Weld On 16 and so forth. So I said a tube of that is 11 bucks, and it comes from you know. Amazon, whatever, great. Uh, I started reading the reviews, and there was a bunch of weird reviews, including people that had pictures saying, you know, they got this tube that had an, another label put on top of it, and a couple of people started picking the, the extra label off, and underneath it, it wasn't Weld On 16, it was Weld On 705. And so, you know, I googled Weld On 705, and <laughs> it's PVC cement. Uh, um, and, you know, I've used PVC cement, you know, for the, the plumbing fixtures with the purple stuff, the primer that you put on, and then the glue and you put it in it sets really fast and it's it's strong i mean it, it's basically welding the pvc together and so now i start to think well geez if it's if it's really weld on 705 inside the weld on 16 tube just at a higher price maybe i can just go get any old pvc cement at home depot and i'll be all right i mean there's a whole bunch of those so i went to home depot but i went to a different section i didn't go to the super glue section i went to the pvc glue section and i got this you know od medium gray pvc PVC cement, you know, whatever. Uh, uh, I got it because it seemed like it was maybe not as fast. I was worried about the stuff being too fast because of the epoxy. Uh, and I tried it, and it worked terribly. So, so much for that idea. Uh, uh, I let it cure for a while. So it turned out that get, you know, having it be too fast was not a problem. Uh, but even after letting it cure for a long time, I could just twist the foot right off the uh, acrylic sheet. So that idea was a bummer. And I said, okay, so now I'm back to square one. Uh, but a couple of days later, I said, well, I don't know. I mean, maybe I could try, if, if the speed of the PVC cement is not the problem, maybe I can go try some of the faster stuff. So I went back and I got a bottle of this OD Fusion stuff, which is supposed to be primer and cement in one. Plus uh, this this classic separate thing, the purple primer and then the PVC cement. And I tried them today. And here's what happened. So <coughs> this stuff was crap. This uh, thing, uh, Fusion Single Step, clear is instead of gray. Clear is obviously good. Uh, oops, there we go. Uh, uh, you don't need the uh, horizontal grab. Wow.
more of the smell. I'll take that as encouraging. Uh, 15 minutes for good bonding strength and two hours. Uh, um, wait, we can get some parallel weighting. So that what's the deal? let that go for a few hours what the heck uh, I don't know after the medium gray PVC cement was so bad I was pessimistic about this but might be okay we'll see well it's been few hours. How long did these guys want to cure? Screw it. Yeah, that's pretty good. Yeah, that's pretty good too. So it's, these, these are pretty stiff at first, but the, uh, that one's good. Yeah, see, it even spins. So it's being held by the geometry and not by friction all right so the idea would be to start anywhere and start tiling out gluing them down don't have to do the whole thing at once do you know for whatever it is and you know the important point is getting the, the degree of freedom in the rotation of the feet squared up as best as possible since this stuff is number one is cheap and number two is easy to use so well, relatively speaking, I guess I would go with the uh, the fusion, the one step, if it, if it really is, because uh, it's clear. Look at that. That's not going anywhere. That's great. Okay. But then the idea would be you could cut the acrylic afterwards, so that half of this guy now, of course. It might be better to actually have the thing overhang, but let's give it a try. If we put it on the table saw, is it going to vibrate these things off? Oh man, that seems pretty good. Uh, uh, all right, step by step. to undercut this guy that he's just going to vibrate loose as well not a very lovely edge but purple and blue appears to have hung on so there it is uh, uh, the bottom line uh, uh, you know, yes, uh, traditional, regular old PVC primer and solvent bonds, great. Now, I think, uh, having gone through this, that 
as probably if you want to pick one single factor, it's the purple primer, which, you know, actually softens the plastic and so forth. And so if you're doing, you know, teeny tiny little detail work and, and you can't stand to have a little bit of your surface soften up or your tolerances are too tight, then this is not for you. I use super glue or whatever it is. But uh, otherwise, if you want an actual weld, I think, you know, you, you get the purple primer, you probably could use the other stuff. You could probably use any PVC uh, and get, you know, Q-tip swabs, whatever, a little purple primer boom you are good so i hope that helps somebody it was a little bit of a surprise to me uh that i could get a, a good pla acrylic solution just at the hardware store okay uh, uh i skipped over a thing last week uh when i was so we were talking about the um the getting the intertile lock grabbing going which is half of the task of what has to happen between the tiles. You've got to grab the lock at the beginning of an event, you do the event, and then you send messages saying, okay, change this, change this, change this. So part of it is locking, and the other part of it is sending packets with cache updates saying what changes were made. And the locking really needs to be fast because that's basically innermost loop. Every time we're at the edge and we want to have an event, we have to say, can we get the locks? So we got it from like 300 milliseconds down to 150 microseconds, which was great. But as I skipped over for the lack of time, that time there was a very strange little factor that I noticed which is I had this this tester that was you know picking you know you pick, you pick six bits saying you know if it's a zero bit I don't want that lock if it's a one bit I do want that lock and the way it works is that the user space the program eventually it'll be MFMT2 but right now it's just a test program lock stats uh, uh, sends six bits off to the kernel saying which locks it wants and which locks it doesn't and then we see what happens and then we score it and we wait until we get them and so on and every so often the locks would take too long to settle and my lock stack guy would declare a failure that uh, it came back and it wasn't what it was doing now when lock stack did do that it would go ahead and check again after waiting a little bit and usually the last lock would come in so it was just late it wasn't like it was broken and the thing that was weird was that it was at first it was always east that was late and why would that be the whole point of this is that it should be spatially spatially isotropic Tropic, everything the same in every direction. So if east is always being the, the one that's late, that's weird. Uh, eventually I made locks that a little more sophisticated, so it might grab these locks or it might grab those locks, and then it ended up either being east or west that was always late. So this week I spent a lot of time building up a uh, mechanism to record locking events and you know these are happening at the millionth of a second granularity so it's not like I could just use printfs to say okay I tried to grab the lock this stuff is happening it interrupts there are edges that are coming from the neighbors and electrical signal going whoop and that's causing the kernel to interrupt and say do my code that's how we're buying speed so it, what I decided to do was to build an internal buffer inside the kernel module that I could make it as fast as I could using another one of these K-FIFOs that I had so much trouble with uh, in the previous weeks, but now I have a little bit of comfort with uh, to buffer up all the events uh, in whatever form I can do quickly and then uh, have a program to read them from user space and somehow decode them. So, you know, I made a bunch of to-do, spin locks, make events, blah, 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 I checked them off as I got through them. Uh, eventually I had it so that um, the uh, my program, if I just dumped what was coming back to user space, it was like all this uh, gobbledygook because the point was it was formatted in a way to be tight and quick to generate. So then I needed to get a program running in user space to decode it. Uh, uh, so eventually I did, and I started getting stuff like this, and it was fascinating. Uh, uh, so right uh, uh, right entered from user. So that means I made a call saying, you know, please set these locks, release those locks. I gave it uh, six, which is two one bits and four zero bits well it's eight but uh in in hexadecimal and base 16 and that said six says i want the southeast locked and the southwest lock as it turns out how it works so southeast went into s take mode its state machine went into i want this thing and when it's in that state it says uh, i'm requesting the lock so southeast output request lock that means it's driving a pin high which is going to cause an interrupt on the neighbor to our southeast same thing uh, for uh, Southwest, we're going to take and so forth. And so here, you know, this is at the beginning 
beginning of relative time, five millionths of a second later, four millionths of a second after that, one millionth of a second after that, and so forth. And then a huge, relatively speaking, 62 milliseconds uh, after all that happened, we got Iger locks it. I is an input bit saying the other guy granted us the lock. And so that's what we wanted to do. So it's 62 microseconds round trip for that part of it. Uh, and then a few moments later, eight mic well, nine microseconds later, uh, uh, Southeast also responded, I grant you the lock, and that's an event done. So this uh, lock tracing vulnerability, uh, visibility, although it took a couple, well, several days, that was the major software business uh, of this past week, uh, it is just really great. It's been great for debugging, and I'm sure it'll be great for optimization going forward. There's a basic principle I have of, uh, uh, you know, developmental software, research software, that, you know, an hour spent improving your visualization always pay back 10 times uh, in terms of insight and helping you solve problems down the road. And indeed, once I had this and I could look at a bunch of traces and figure out what was going on, I solved the mystery of why East and West are always late. And so the question, if everything is balanced, how can possibly be always East and West that are late? And the answer is, it's, be, it's not because of the kernel module, it's not because of the hardware, it's not because of anything inside the thing, it's because of the Lockstat program. The Lockstat program was testing cases just by counting 0, 1, 2, 3, and then it was taking the bottom six bits of that and sending it off to say, I want these locks and I don't want those locks. So east, it turns out, is the least significant bit. Uh, it's the rightmost bit. And that means in binary counting order, it's going on and off and on and off off and on and off. So that means in every next step, it's trying to undo whatever it did. If it had it, it wants to release it. If it didn't have it, it wants to get it. Whereas all the other ones are flipping more slowly. So conceivably, some of the other bit could have been late, but in fact, it was always east and west. And in fact, when we went ahead and made Lockstat, instead of doing incrementing in order because I thought it didn't matter, uh, uh, once I made random tests, then the problem went away. In traditional software engineering, when something isn't deterministic, when something isn't repeatable, you go and debug it. In this case, <laughs> when something is repeatable, you go back and debug it. Okay, so at a time. Uh, uh, next week uh, is uh, Artificial Life 2019 uh, in England. Uh, next Tuesday, we'll be in Newcastle upon the River Tyne, uh, um, and I hope to have something. It, it won't be a full on update, but I hope to have some little bit of news to check in with you. Have a good week. <laughs>